This conference will now be recorded. This is the day one session, which as a part of this, we'll be discussing some more important basic things. So before going to automation, so overview and automation and selenium. If you can see the today's agenda, what is software testing? You can do software testing in using selenium by using manually. And if you are using automation tools, also you are facing some challenges in manual testing. You will go to automation testing. Even though you go for automation testing, you will use some tools. You will have some difficulties. And before that, how that automation tool works, you need to know. So we will see how does automation tool works. And as a part of automation tool, there are multiple tools available. But we are restricted to discuss here only Selenium. What are the advantages of Selenium? disadvantages and what is the family of selenium from where it comes from so we'll discuss about its suit these are our agenda today we'll be discussing each and everything in detail and what is software before going to discuss about software testing definitely you need to have a software so that you can test that software so when i say software it is a collection of computer programs used to perform certain tasks or specific tasks suppose if you can take this adobe from which i have opened this particular pdf this is a software this is an application I can also call this as. So what it is doing, it is achieving me some specific task. I'm just able to open the PDF. I'm able to edit the PDF. So it is a collection of a computer programs, not a single program. Multiple programs have been running in the background as well. I can say it is a collection of computer program designed to perform or designed to achieve specific tasks or i can also call that as a function then what are the different type of softwares available in the market if you can see we are having system software programming software application software these are three different categories of software which you can find in the market.
these are all programming softwares and why we need these programming softwares so to help developers in creating programs testing that programs debugging that programs which we designed then what are application softwares so you have a lot of applications in the market like when you open play store you'll be having mobile applications if you open microsoft store you will have desktop applications similarly if you want to perform anything on the web application like you will be having different type of web applications like you can take uh, flipkart it's the best example you can take amazon you can take ebay right these are different type of complex applications you can find in the market also these are different type of softwares system software programming software application software and even we need more details like what is a product what is a project what is an error what is a bug defect and failure as well so when you working in the service based company you will serve for another client so i can term this as so and so person is assigned to a project for this particular client if you are working in your own company if you have some specific product like suppose if you are working in microsoft you have your own product ms office azure like different products are available from your organization i can call that as a product if you are working for the same company and if your company is having some product so you can work for the product itself project is different product is different what is a project it is developed for a specific customer based on their requirement like we have already discussed when you are working for a service based company service based company will deploy you to another client so that client is nothing but a specific customer based on his requirement you will be able to work for them this is nothing but a project developed for specific customers or customer then what is a product so when i say multiple customers all the customers may be multiple customers using that particular product so product is a software developed for multiple customers based on market requirements like you can take microsoft outlook it is one product from microsoft gmail google mail from google so these are two different products serving for different customers or even common customers so based on customer requirements you will develop a product so that customer requirements i can call this here as market requirements so this is what you need to know about project and product what is an error if you make some mistake that result to into incorrect result so i can say human action nothing but human mistake that produces an incorrect result is called as an error then what is a bug or a defect so you take this particular website this is the website just i have taken for your understanding i am just entering this username admin is the username admin 123 is the password so i am able to log in so if i give proper credentials only i will i should be able to log in 
not i can be i should be if i enter in invalid credentials even though if i click on login if it allowed me for the application then it is a bug so it is not an expected behavior right so if i enter proper credentials only it should allow me into the application if i enter improper credentials or invalid credentials also if it is able to add, allow me into that application it is nothing but a bug i can say it is not an expected behavior if anybody logins into that application what is the purpose of having this authentications so it is not an expected behavior so when i say bug or a defect deviation from expected behavior what is the expected behavior valid credentials you should be able to log in invalid credentials you should not be able to log in this is the expected behavior but what is the actual behavior if it is able to allow you to log in even though you enter invalid credentials it is the actual behavior so there is a deviation between expected and actual so that deviation i called as bug or defect of that particular application or a system or a software what is a failure then the deviation identified by end user while using the system is called as a failure let me make you understand in a simple way let me take flipkart if you can see here let me take some random text here this is the random text which i am entering for this text box if you can see already i have given sign off in the qa environment actually the bug is identified the identified by the customer whenever he is using the system that what the failure is so let me take the sample uh, example so the failure is there is some fix which is given by developer and that fix is tested by QS in QA environment they have given the sign off and it has moved to UAT environment business people have tested and given the sign off and at last it has moved to production environment you have given the fix for something but unfortunately you let suppose it has broken this particular functionality what is the functionality it is a text box i should be able to enter the text and after entering the text i should be able to clear the text this is what the expected result but if let suppose i enter the text unfortunately i should not be able to clear the text in this case it is clearing but unfortunately i am not able to clear this it is a failure you have given the fix for something but it has broken the functionality of the existing one i can call this as a failure so who identified this suppose qa has missed this and given the sign off uat people has missed this and given the sign off production environment where the actual business things happen whenever business things are happening if any customer is able to identify this and he raises an issue that is called as a failure that issue is called as a failure so the deviation identified by end user who is the end user customer who is using the system is called as an end user is called as a failure this is what about a project product error bug or defect and failure these are all the basic things before going to learn anything we should be able to understand the basics that what we are learning here then you have a software you know what is a project product failure bug defect what is software testing before going to that why do we need software testing you can take example of gmail you can take example of outlook these are two different products serving for customers so whoever provides the best service best product to the customers they will be king in the market 
and if that particular product is a buggy product if it is having some issues yes initially the customer base will be very high but the customer base will be going down because of that buggy product so you can analogy this to your daily basis work like you, you can say whenever you are cooking food at the very beginning you use, used to taste that if all the ingredients are fine then it is okay if any of the thing or any of the ingre ingredient is less you will add some something to it to get the taste in the similar way before releasing the product into the market you should make that particular product to be tested thoroughly before testing or without testing if you release that product it may have bugs which will impact your whole business at the end of the day every company is used to make the money if they are having some buggy product nobody will be able to take that buggy product instead what they will do they will switch for another product which is the competitor of this so all the market base will be shifted to that competitive product so in, since it is a competitive world everything should be perfect for the customer and we do software testing to make software a bug free software and we will check whether the system which you designed or we designed or a company designed meets the customer requirements and once the customer has given you that i want this software in this way this is what a requirement and he also suggests that i want this particular software to be built built on this particular tech stack i can also state them as software specifications so before releasing the product into the market or before releasing the product to the client you will also check as a part of software testing whether the software or the system which you designed able to meet the customer requirements and software specifications also coming to end user perspective when you design a system it should be able to meet end user expectations to check that is it able to meet the end user expectations you will do software testing once you release the product into the market if you identified that product is having any bug again you need to fix that bug which the company may have to bear they have to pay for the developer again they have to pay for the tester and even before that the time is delayed which will cost the company heavily so fixing the bugs identified when you release the product and if the bugs are found fixing that bugs identified after release is more expensive whenever developing that product if it cost you suppose 10 rupees after releasing that product into the market there is a bug it makes you some 20 or 30 rupees it is a loss to the company and within this time another competitor may enter into the market all the market base will be captured by that particular competitor so there are a lot of issues which will make company to let down so to avoid all these things we should do software testing before releasing any product into the market it is very important if you observe or if you see most of the ceos i have observed coming from the testing background because they know at what extent how much extent a product to be tested they can think of different directions but a developer thinks only in one direction but a tester should think able to think in all directions possible so that always developer makes the product always 
the tester mindset should be breaking that product so tester should break that product break that particular functionality what a developer does developer thinks that yes i have built that a good application so there are no bugs like that he thinks but at the end of the day soft tester is the person who signs the particular functionality so tester mindset should be opposite to developer always a tester should break the function functionality of that particular application in all the aspects so to achieve good product we need software testing also we have seen why do we need software testing then what is software testing it is an activity to check whether actual results match with expected results if actual and expected are matching then i can say that software is a defect free software or a bug free software so it is an activity or i can also convey software testing in the another way so software testing helps to identify errors gaps missing requirements a customer has given me some requirements those are nothing but actual requirements i have developed the product there may be a chance i may be able to miss something so those things can be identified with the help of software testing those things are called as errors gaps and missing requirements and how can you do software testing you can do anything in two ways not only related to software testing anything you can take cycling you need to do it or you need to cycle manually when you take motorcycle it is an automated version of manual cycling so you can do any things or any work in two ways one is by manually and by using automation tools so coming to manually suppose this is an application let me take here i am just opening this particular web application and after opening this i am just entering username and password admin 123 after that i am able to enter this username and password i am able to click the login button if i click on the login button it is able to land on this particular home page of this particular web application this is what i have done this manually i should be able to achieve this by using automation don't worry you will not be able to understand every line or every single code which i have written here don't worry just see how i have achieved the same thing by using automation i am just running this script you can see it here it has entered username password logged in onto that home page it has checked whether the title of that particular web page is orange hrm or not and if it is matching then it has printed title matched you can see it here so the same thing within no time i have achieved it through automation within less time so i can do the same thing manually and by using automation tools then anyway at the end of the day you do testing when you develop a product or when you develop a software when you develop an application what are the different levels of testing you perform when you develop a product unit testing developer develops that particular functionality developer also need to test at the code level that code level testing is called as integration testing sorry unit testing code level testing done by developer for a particular functionality or for a specific functionality is called as unit testing 
when i say specific functionality specific component nothing but individual component what about integration testing there are 100 developers or multiple developers which they will develop multiple functionalities and all the functionalities to be integrated in one place where we will perform integration testing so testing the integrated component is called as integration testing then what about system testing once all the development activity is done they will deploy the code in QA environment QA is responsible for giving the sign off for that particular developer functionality where we will do system testing testing the entire system is called as system testing these are all the basic and important interview questions when you are attending for interview once the QA has tested the entire system once he given the sign off the system will be deployed to UAT environment user acceptance testing environment there business persons come into picture business people will test the entire system once they have given the sign off it will go for production environment so simply like you can think of this example you have already app or mobile application in your mobile which you have downloaded from play store you can see for every two days or three days you will get an update for that web application so with versions like some 1.0 2.0 2.2.0 like that so if there are any issues in that particular recent or the current version those issues will be fixed by the developer and QA will be able to test after signing off in the QA environment they will go for UAT
This conference will now be recorded. As a part of system testing, you will be having GUI testing, usability, functional testing, and non-functional testing. Like as a part of GUI, you will do all the uh, UI level testings, like you know, clicking the buttons, checking if the layout is correct, checking if the size of the text which is displayed on the particular screen or the interface is in the proper uh, dimensions or not. These are all the things which you perform as a part of GUI testing. Coming to usability, how people able to use and understand easily that particular application. Nothing but this name itself is usability using. So as a part of that, you will do checking the menus are clear or not, tasks are straightforward or not. So these are all the things. Whether you, you should be able to navigate that particular application in a smooth way or not, like this, you will do. Coming to functional testing, you will test the functionality of that particular web application, like login, logout, search, functionality, register, sign up, sign out. So these are all the things. Nothing but functionalities, nothing but components, individual components. Coming to non-functional testing, it is not related to functionality aspects. It is related to performance, security. So these things comes under non-functional testings. With the same user or the single user or multiple users logged in to the same application, it should work as expected. It should not broke any functionality of that application. You will get to know in non-functional testing. Similarly, there are a lot of data associated with the application. So generating data is one, one aspect. Using the data is another aspect. But in between these two, protecting the data is very much important. That way you will come this security testing. So this will be performed as a part of non-functional testing. So if you can see what are the different type of functional and non-functional testings, you can see these are functional testings. These are non-functional testings. Unit testing, component testing, smoke, integration, regression, sanity, system testing, and user acceptance testing. So I am not going any detail into this because it is not a manual testing session. And coming to non-functional testing, if you want material, I can share it with you. It's not a problem but I'm not going in detail for this manual testing concepts. I can share you the material. As a part of non-functional testing, you'll have stress testing, volume, maintainability, security, scalability, compatibility, usability, performance, and load testing. So these are different type of functional and non-functional testings. You can expect anything from the interview. All the things which we have discussed, you can expect in interview. So every automation testing guy, if he's able to, or if he's learning directly automation testing, he should understand some manual concepts. So that is the reason where we are discussing this. And why we go for another technology if you are having already existing one? If there are any challenges, then we will go for another technology similarly there are a lot of challenges in manual testing like it is boring you have to do the same thing again and again you can take this login of any application if you want to test any functionality definitely you need to log in into that application so if you want to test multiple things definitely you need to log in multiple times it is a boring thing nothing but time consuming tedious when i say difficult when i say tedious it is difficult similarly mistakes human can make mistakes or they can also make errors and when a developer fixes a bug definitely we have to retest we have to do a regression testing all these things are the challenges in manual testing so we have gone for automation testing before going to see what is automation testing there are challenges like retesting and regression testing in manual testing. 
what is retesting what is regression testing very important interview question executing same test case by giving number of different inputs on the same build is called as retesting in scenario 1 let me write the scenarios so as a part of retesting very important try to listen it uh, carefully see scenarios for retesting you can take this login functionality login and logout functionality so as a part of this first scenario is you will enter valid username and password similarly in the second scenario in the second case or in the second round what you will do you will enter valid username and invalid password in the third scenario what you will do i can say when i say third scenario it is nothing but third round you will enter invalid username and valid password similarly in the fourth scenario or in the fourth round you will test the same login functionality you will test the login and logout functionality of that particular web application by entering invalid username and password there are four rounds you can think of like you know you are testing the login functionality of any application nothing but you can think the same test case nothing but same functionality login and logout functionality when i say same test case you can think of like this for while first round you will enter valid username and password yes you will be able to login next next round valid username and invalid password when you click on login button you should not be able to login because invalid credentials similarly invalid username and valid password invalid username and password so you are testing the same functionality in the same application nothing but same build in different ways you are giving different inputs different test data multiple rounds different test data so testing the same test case or the same functionality on the same build nothing but same application multiple times by by giving number of inputs is called as retesting what about regression testing you can take this particular example regression testing very important so listening it very carefully is also very important so when i say regression testing you can take of gmail application so gmail you will be having inbox also you will be having sent items similarly you will also be having spam folder you will also be having some lot of like you know like i can uh, take this as drafts folder so likewise there are multiple things in any application not only this few there are a lot of things you can take this example like gmail in gmail you will be having different modules suppose if there is a bug in the spam module bug if you find any bug in the spam module what the developer does the tester will reports this bug to the developer developer gives the fix once developer gives the fix tester needs to retest this bug meaning execute the same functionality in which he finds that particular bug with different test data multiple times after retesting what he should do he should also test whether the functionalities nothing but existing functionalities like in the inbox or i can say in the different modules is not broken so this is the existing bug you will retest this after fixing at the time of retesting you will also test other modules as well so why you need to test other modules 
to check because of this particular bug fix it should not disturb it is not disturbed other modules as well this is nothing but a regression testing so even in detail regression testing is a type of software testing executed to check whether the code change has not unfavorably disturbed disturbed current features or functionality of application developer has fixed the bug in the spam folder but that bug fix in the spam folder should not disturb sent items functionality inbox functionality and wraps functionality this is what you need to do regression testing at the time of testing this spam folder you will you need to test this inbox sent and wraps also other and before modules as well because this bug fix should not disturb existing functionalities so i can say when i say existing current features of any application for that you will do regression testing so who is responsible qa engineer is responsible and he needs to spend lot of time and effort to perform retesting and regression testing we have seen retesting and regression testing is a challenge in manual testing so we can avoid that we can overcome that by using automation by using any tool like cypress is also one of the automation tool selenium catalan studio tosca there are different type of automation tools then how does an automation tool works before that what we have done we have already seen we have logged into this particular application manually entered username password and clicked on login button so this is what we have achieved we have written a manual test case like you can think of this manual test case let me open some materials which we have already written these are the materials which you will be getting as a part of this course one by one you can think of like this one second if you can see this is the material as a part of this we have already done some test case i'm just going it here if you can see you write a test case and by seeing this test case you will test some functionality like login and logout similarly you will write some manual test case you will execute this manual test cases on the application when you say when i say aut application under test application under test so you will execute this manual test cases manually by with the help of human intervention on the application coming to automation tool when you use any automation tool you write this test case manually and you can convert that manual test case into automation test script that what we are seeing it here the same thing which you have achieved manually we have achieved the same thing we have converted the same manual execution with the help of automation script and you will execute this automation script on the application under test converting manual steps to automation test script that what and where the automation tools work and as a part of that we use selenium what is selenium it is a free when i say free it is nothing but open source you can see the source code of this particular tool it is used for automation and since it is free and open source it is having a testing suit means it is a collection of ide rc web driver and selenium grid when i say selenium it is having multiple components those multiple components i can refer them as a suit so selenium is not a single tool it is a system of ecosystem of tools ide rc web driver and selenium grid but we call them wholly as a selenium it is 
automation testing suite for web applications across different browsers. For testing any web applications in an automation way, we use Selenium. So, when you use Selenium tool for testing, I can call that as Selenium testing. As we discussed, Selenium is not a single tool, but it is a ecosystem of tools, suit of softwares. When I say ecosystem, it's a suit. It has four components like IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It is the very beginning or the very first Selenium, one of the Selenium tool. Similarly, Selenium RC, WebDriver and Grid. But most popular and most efficient where you can write good complex test cases is by using Selenium WebDriver. And as we discussed, it is a suit. Selenium RC, WebDriver, ID and Selenium Grid. And Selenium RC and WebDriver are merged and we had a new version selenium 2 and it is updated to selenium 3 now in the market we are having selenium 4 so if you can go to official documentation of selenium web driver selenium you can see that go to selenium search for selenium and you can see right now in the market go to downloads you can see right now in the market you are having 4.19 nothing but fourth version is running in the market so you can see all the updates in the selenium documentation so you can also write that automation script not only in python you can write the same script in java for that you have java client library similarly you can also write by using a ruby c sharp Python, JavaScript. These are different Selenium client libraries. Or I can also call as Selenium language bindings. You can use them and you can write your automation script. Also, what about ID? It is a Firefox and Chrome extension. We can use in creating relatively simple test cases. So right now it is not very efficiently used in the market. Of all these things, Selenium WebDriver is the most popular tool. You can interact with any web application with the help of a coding language by using this automation tool. Similarly, Selenium RC, I can also call it as it is Selenium 1, Selenium with version 1. First Selenium tool that allowed users to use programming languages for creating complex test cases it is a newer breakthrough selenium web driver that allows test scripts to communicate directly to the browser we can directly communicate to the browser because in the selenium web driver also if you can observe this in up to selenium 3 you will be having one type of protocol from selenium 4 you will be having the same protocol which follows w3c if you can observe this you can understand this this is the thing which you will be uh, we will be discussing in the coming classes if you can see this particular example you will be having different communications in the selenium 3 and selenium 4 but from selenium 4 onwards you will be having same communication between the client libraries and the browsers like w3c protocol we will be seeing all these things so it can directly talk to the browser selenium web driver when i say selenium grid it is one of the tool of selenium suit it is used for executing parallel test cases like you can execute the same test case in multiple browsers or you can execute multiple test cases in different browsers and operating systems like you can take off windows linux mac etc selenium rc and web driver was merged and selenium 2 has been formed that what you are seeing in this particular image then every tool every application every product definitely will be having some disadvantages so selenium is also having some disadvantages like it is only for testing 
web applications very important interview question as well you will not be able to test desktop applications also since it is a free and open source there is no guaranteed support available for selenium we need to leverage communities we need to use communities if we are having any doubts also you will not be able to perform testing on images for that you need to use sequly for image based testing also it cannot automate capture let me write it here and graphs so these are the important things and otp based things so this cannot be automated for this you need to integrate selenium with other or third party libraries there is no native reporting facility once you execute a text case or test step or automation script definitely at the end of the day you need to get one report let me show you here this is with the previous sessions so that you can understand open cart v1 i am just opening it here if you can see this is the report which we have generated after executing open in browser that automation script if you can see this is the report which you will be getting you can customize this report that is secondary but you can see the report even in detail so selenium is not having that capability if you use frameworks like as a part of this course we will be discussing pytest framework when you use java you can use testng or junit so if you integrate this with selenium you can get the reporting facility as you are seeing here so these are the major disadvantages of selenium likewise we have discussed about what is software testing manual testing how does automation tool works selenium advantages disadvantages and selenium suit